Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. Today we're looking at the top five most played Pioneer decks as of March 2024. And I'm really excited to talk about this because I've been playing the format a lot recently, especially with a new card in my favorite deck. As a matter of fact, I played three leagues yesterday and I'm probably going to play even more today because I just love the format. I love where it's at and my deck is doing great. So why wouldn't I? play the deck so much so first i want to start with an honorable mention it's not the fifth most popular deck but if we count both variants of the deck technically it would be the fifth most popular so i'm going to count it as an honorable mention it's omnath to light or niv to light you see both decks are incredibly similar they play yorian they play forbring to light and they play a bunch of two color instants and sorceries and very powerful creatures and Niv to Light also plays Omnath, so it's pretty much the same deck. But they're technically not the same archetype on MTG Goldfish, the website I use for reference. So I will only put it as an honorable mention. Now the goal of this deck is to play a bunch of lands like Triomes and Rainbow Lands and a bunch of different lands in order and also Sylvan Carited to fix your mana. To play an Omnath, Locus of Creation, or Bring to Light to get the Omnath, or to get niv Mizet Reborn, which is only a one of, but you have four copies of Bring to Light to get it, so you'll get it pretty often. And then you have maximum value out of that card, because when it enters the battlefield, you reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom in a random order. So you, that means you can get, for example, you reveal the top 10 cards of your deck, you can get Lightning Helix, then On Morty Go, Bring to Light, Escape to the Wilds. You can also get uh, Deputy of Detention or No More Lies. So you can get a lot of value out of Niv Mizet Reborn. And the deck also plays four copies of Up the Beanstalk, which is great with Bring to Light, Deadly Cover Up, Escape to the Wilds, and all the other expensive cards you have in your deck. Then you have Chain to the Rocks, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and Leyline Binding, which is also great with Up the Beanstalk. This is a very grindy deck. It gets a lot of value out of, of the Beanstalk, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Omnath, uh, niv Mizet Reborn, and also Elish Norn. So it's it's the deck that crushes on all the mid-range decks that think they can grind. This deck can really grind. You see, most display two copies of niv Mizets and also one copy of niv Mizet Supreme, which gives jump start to all the instants and sorceries in your graveyard that are exactly two colors. And you play a bunch of those. So that allows, that allows you to discard a land and play your Cold Against Command, your Molten Collapse, your Vanishing Verse over and over again to get a lot of value. And the deck also plays cards like Slaughter Games and Unmoored Ego to um, really mess with the opponents playing decks like Lotus Field Combo, which, spoiler alert, is my Pioneer deck. But I think one of the reasons why this deck became popular is that now we have a lot more options for two colored cards. So for example, in addition to Lightning Helix and also Bring to Light, we now have No More Lies, which is one of the best new cards for the Pioneer formats, great in blue-white control, and now also great in the five color decks. We also have Ill-Timed Explosion, which it's four mana for sorcery, draw two cards, and you may discard two cards when you do. Deals X damage to X creatures to each creature, where X is the greatest mana value among cards discarded this way. So it can be a wrath and also some card draw. That's really nice. Also, analyze the pollen can allow you to search up for some basic lands, but later in the game, you can exile some cards from your graveyard, collect evidence eight. So cards with total mana value eight or greater to search for a creature or a land. So that's really good. You can get your Niv Mizzet with this or Elish Norn or Omnath, but you can also get a land you really need. And then we also have Urgent Necropsy, two generic, one black, one green for an instant. As an additional cost to cast it, you collect Evidence X, where X is the total mana value of the permanence the spell targets. You can destroy up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, up to one target enchantment, and up to one target planeswalker. So that could be really backbreaking against decks like the Mirror Match or any decks that play very different permanent types. Now for lands, of course, you play a bunch of Triomes, Shock Lands few basic lands for Analyze the Polen. Sideboard, you have Dovin's Veto for blue-white control, which is really popular right now. Also great against Lotus Field combo. Then you have Deafening Clarion for small creature decks. Lavinia, uh, Notion Thief, Soul Search, which is also a new card. Played almost as a full playset in all decks. 
It's a new card from the Ravnica set. It's like a thought seize, but you exile the card, and if the card's mana value is one or less, you make a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit token with flying. They have rest in peace for Is it Phoenix, really popular right now, but it's also good against Lotus Field combo because it stops Balagid recovery and also Lear, Disciple of the Drum. They have Reckoner Bankbuster for grady matchups and Deafening Silence for Lotus Field combo and Is it Phoenix. So that's Niv to Light. Now let's move on to the real number five deck on this list, which is Abzan Amalia combo. Right now it's 5.6% of the metagame, whereas Niv decks are. 4.6%, but the Omnath to bring to light is 1.3, so technically that's a little more than Amalia combo. But Amalia combo, for those of you who are not familiar, is a, an infinite combo deck that uses Amalia Benevit Zaguire. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Amalia, and Wild Growth Walker. So when you have Amalia on the battlefield, ideally on turn two, you play Wild Growth Walker, and then either a Cenote Scout or a Lunark Veteran or something that makes you either gain life or explore. And then that will trigger Amalia to explore. And then Wild Growth Walker will trigger since Amalia explores. So we get a counter on it. You gain three life and that triggers Amalia again. So then that's an infinite combo. When Amalia reaches power 20, it destroys everything. So that stops the infinite loop. And then you get to attack the opponent for exactly 20. A problem with this is if the opponent is playing Burrow's Heroic and he targets your Amalia with a pump spell in response to the 20th trigger, then Amalia will not destroy all creatures since it will check its power and its power will be 21. So that will force you to do the infinite combo and the game will end in a draw. And that's how the finals of the Pro Tour ended in seven games because two of them were draws. So that's a pretty fun fact with uh, Amalia. You need to be aware of that when playing against decks with pump spells. And then the rest of the deck is full of either small creatures that gain life or explore to trigger Amalia and Wild Growth Walker. And also creatures like Voice of Resurgence, Extraction Specialist, Sentinel of the Nameless City, and Skyclave Apparition that have different use cases and allow you to grind in uh, different matchups where, for example, they might have a removal spell for your Amalia and then you just have to win by attacking with creatures. Then you have Court of Calling to get either Combo Piece, Collected Company, same here. It's also a great value play. And Return to the Ranks, amazing card against Rakdos Midrange and other grindy matchups where you need to bring back all your creatures. You also have Aetherflux Reservoir, which can allow you to win the turn you play Amalia. Because if you play Amalia and it reaches power 20 and it has summoning sickness and then you can't attack the opponent, it's useless because the opponent can just bounce it or kill it on their turn and then or play a creature to block it and then you can't do much. So Aetherflux Reservoir allows you to just use all the life you get, kill the opponent in one shot. Then the lands, nothing too fancy. Four mana confluence, some fast lands, some shock lands. One Takinuma, one Eganjo, and one Baseju. Uh, then some lists also play Gilded Goose, Dina, Soul Steeper, or Kilan, Daring Traveler. Most lists only play two Return to the Ranks. They used to play four, but now they play a lot less. Sideboard, you have Arc, you have a bunch of stuff. You have Ray Dane and Archon of Emeria for Lotus Field. Deep Cavern Bats also great in that matchup. They have Knight of Dust Shadow, Fatal Push. Uh, Knight of Dust Shadow great against the Mirror Match because your opponent can gain life. They have Fatal Push for the Mirror Match. Thought Seize for Lotus Field combo, Blue Eye Control. Haywire Might for any deck with a bunch of artifacts and enchantments like the Niv Mizzet decks and uh, Fire Enigmatic Fires decks. Get Lost for some removal against the Mirror Match and other creature decks. Skyclave Apparition for some more removal. Voice of Resurgence for control decks like Blue White. Sentinel of the Nameless City for other grindy matchups. And Remorseful Cleric for Phoenix. So that's Abzan Amalia combo. Now at number four is my personal deck. With 7.7% .7 of the metagame, we have Hidden Strings, which I call Lotus Field combo. And this deck has gotten significantly better with the printing of Arch Druid's Charm. It's triple green for an instant, you need to choose one. Search your library for a creature or a land card and reveal it. Put it onto the battlefield tap if it's a land card, otherwise put it into your hand, then shuffle. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And the third ability is exile target artifact or enchantment. Of course, the best ability on this card is the first one because it allows you to search up your Lotus Field or your Thespian stage and put it directly on the battlefield. But 
Do not underestimate its ability to search up a creature because you can get Leer, Disciple of the Drowned, to just flashback everything. Or you can also get Dragon Lord Dramoka Game 1, which is amazing against Blue Eye Control and Phoenix, which, spoiler alert, are the two most popular decks in the format right now. And this has to be my favorite sideboard card in Lotus Field combo. And now I'm able to play it in my main deck. I couldn't be happier because literally the first game I ever played with Archduist Charm, I won because I went turn three. I went turn three Lotus Field, and then I untapped it with Vizier of Tumbling Sands. In my opponent's end step, I went Archduist Charm, get Dragon Lord Jamoka. On my turn, I went play Breeding Pool, hidden strings on top of my lands, play Dragon Lord Jamoka. Opponent scooped. <laughs> so that was one of the easiest games ever. And Dragon Lord Jamoka is just uh, just proof that it's, it's, it's an insane card, and it's totally worth it to play one in the main deck. And then it also gives you another angle of attack with Fay of Wishes because now you have access to a bunch of different cards in your sideboard, so you can search it up with your Archdruid's Charm and use the granted ability to get Emergent Ultimatum. So now Archdruid's Charm becomes a payoff card as well as another version of Sylvan's Crying. But you can also use that to get cards like Silence or Narset Reversal or Terra Sunder if you really need to, but most of the time you're going to use Fair Wishes to get Emergent Ultimatum or maybe Thought Distortion, at least that's in my own experience. And in the sideboard, you also play a bunch of one-off creatures that you can get with the charm in granny matchups. So you have Zakama, Atraxa, and some lists, uh, if you're crazy enough like me, play niv Mizet, Parun. I think it's really good. I'm not a big fan of Atraxa. I played the card, but I just ended up not having the right colors of mana to cast it. It's incredibly hard to cast. And it's not that great because in the deck, you don't play that many different card types. You play mostly sorceries and creatures, but the creatures are not really relevant by the time you cast Atraxa because Arbolic Razor doesn't do anything. And sure, you have like four Viziers, one Leer, one Dramoka, but the odds of you finding them are pretty low. So i um, not a big fan of Atraxa, but I guess I could be wrong. I haven't played the deck that much with the uh, Archdruid's Charm. I'll be testing that. So if you're looking for a sideboard guide on Pioneer Lotus Field combo, check out my Patreon. It's not out now as I'm making this video, but it will. I will release it in the next week as I play the deck more and take the time to write the guide. So that's the that's my explanation of the Archdruid's Charm. This card is just really good in this deck. And now um, they're still playing a very similar strategy than they once were. We saw a list with Strict Proctor and Tails End, but now it seems like that's just out of the question now that we have access to the Charm. You see, it's only in 74% of decks, but I think that's because Goldfish takes into account lists from the last 30 days. And um, I think 30 days ago, people could not even play the card. So I assume this will be 100% next month. And they're cutting Impulse, one Dark Petition. And uh, what else are they cutting? Uh, they're cutting like the one of Baral or the Strict Proctor or also Discontinuity or Tail's End. I was playing Discontinuity, but now, of course, I don't play it because I have access to Archdruid's Charm. They're also cutting one Thespian Stage and one Odawara in the land base to play Sparas Headquarters and also Hedge Maze, a new addition from the Ravnica set. It's a land that surveils one. It's not that great to surveil in Lotus Field combo because you're not really relying on the graveyard. You don't really care about the number of cards in your graveyard. That's what I mean. But to go off, you're going off with Leer, or you can also use Valgate Recovery. That's pretty much the only ways you're using your graveyard. And you don't really care about having a large graveyard. Uh, because by the time you're going off with Ultimatum, it only matters that you have a few relevant cards in the graveyard for a leader. So this Hedge Maze, the Surveil part, is not really that much better than Scry. But the reason why the deck plays Hedge Maze now is because it has a basic land type. So if the opponent goes Sage, use your Thespian Stage, then you can get a Hedge Maze, have some card selection. It also gives you another card to get because if you only have one or two basic lands, especially in a format full of Field of Ruin, then you can run out of lands to get with Besaidu. Then the sideboard, you have Temporary Lockdown for the Boros decks. It's also great against any deck with small permanents like Spirits. Then you have Voyaging Cedar for any fast matchup like Amalia. Norset Reversal for Phoenix, Blue White Control, and any spell-based deck. Dragon Lord Jamoka, amazing card against Phoenix and Blue White. Silence for pretty much the same matchups. It's also good against the mirror match. Zakama for any grindy matchup. Mystical Dispute for Blue White and Phoenix. Sunfall for Phoenix, but also I bring it in against Ragos mid range. 
but it's also good against any creature deck. Same with Path of Peril, and Emergent Ultimatum stays in the sideboard for Fae of Wishes. So that's the State of Hidden Strings or Lotus Field combo. I made a video yesterday talking about the Archdruid's Charm in the deck, and I absolutely love it. And stay tuned on the channel for some more Lotus Field combo content, because a lot more is coming with all the recent changes to the list. I'm going to try to perfect my own deck list and keep you guys updated. So now let's move on to the third most played deck. Ragdos Midrange with 11.6% of the metagame. This is a deck that incorporates Smuggler's Copter. It's only in 35% of decks. Now they're playing a lot more Reckoner Bank Buster because it allows them to grind against decks like Blue-White Control and also Phoenix. This deck can have a hard time against Phoenix, so that's why it plays for Leyland of the Void in the sideboard. And Children the Apocalypse can also be really good against them. And so it plays a classic 4 Blood Tide Harvester. Two copies of Dusk Legion Zealot. That's pretty interesting. But that's pretty good with Smuggler's Copter. And also Preacher of the Schism played in this deck. Uh, this list is pretty weird. It also plays four copies of Soren Imperious Blood. I think I played against this guy on Magic Online. Because uh, that's Seth Manfield. No, maybe not. Uh, that was from the Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. First place. So uh, a very interesting list with four Soren. Wow, that's expensive. And uh, it plays more vampires. I have four copies of Vane Ripper. Yeah, I played against that 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 deck online. And then you have Duress, Fatal Push, Thoughtseize, Bitter Triumph, Smuggler's Copter, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Then sideboard you have Duress, Rending Volley, Bitter Triumph, Napping Sphere, Leliana of the Veil, Path of Peril, Kalidas, Crankles, Buzz Crusher, and Leyline of the Void. And also, a lot of decks are playing Inti, Seneschal of the Sun, which this card is really good. It adds a lot of pressure very quickly. Also, Bone Crusher Giant, Croxa, Graveyard Trespasser, if you're not playing the Vampire version with Sorin. And then you have some more, uh, more removal, like Go for the Throat, Duress, Bitter Triumph, Fatal Push, four copies of Fable, obviously. In the sideboard, you have some more Duress, Damping Sphere, these cards are great against Lotus Field combo. Colligan's Command for grindy matchups like the Mirror Match, Path of Peril. Go Blank for Lotus Field and Blue White. Analysis Hearse for Phoenix. Akla, Akla, Akla Zots for grindy matchups, I guess. Hidetsugu for decks with small permanence. And Liliana of the Veil for grindier matchups. And also, don't tell anybody, but a card I've been, I've been seeing a lot in the sideboard of this deck is Ashiok Dream Render. And that's the card you need to play to beat Lotus Field combo. I literally cannot beat that card. Because it means I cannot use Sylvan Scrying, Archdruid's Charm, or Emergent Ultimatum to find my cards. And also it exiles cards from my graveyard and mills myself. So they can exile my Balagate Recovery, my Chandra, my Lair of the Hydra. So I don't have any win conditions left in the sideboard. So don't tell anybody. But if you want to beat Lotus Field combo, you need to play Ashiok Dream Render. Because it's... It's one of the most painful cards ever, and it's exactly the card you need to beat Lotus Field combo. It's not Damping Sphere. It's not Graph Digger's Cage or Rest in Peace. It's Ashiok that you want to use if you want to beat Lotus Field combo. By the way, <laughs> this deck costs almost $1,000 for a Pioneer deck. That's just insane. But anyways, let's move on to the second most played deck right now with 13.5% of the meta. It's Blue White Control. And I assume the deck got a lot more popular because of the printing of No More Lies. But it was also really popular before the printing of that card. It's one white and a blue for an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it in its owner's graveyard. That's a really good card. Pretty similar to Mana Leak, but it's slightly harder to cast. But in a two-color blue-white deck, it shouldn't really be a problem. Almost half the list are playing Yorion. And if you're playing Yorian, you're probably playing Omen of the Sea in the main deck. And some more cards like Deduce that are more filler type. And then it plays the classic Dobin's Veto. Three copies in the main deck. Three Supreme Verdict. Memory Deluge. Get Lost. Hallowed Moonlight, uh, which is great against Phoenix. March of Otherworldly Light. Farewell. Dig Through Time. Sensor. Deduce. And then Temporary Lockdown as your main Wrath in addition to Supreme Verdict. And two to three copies of Shark Typhoon. In the lands, it has a few new additions like Restless Anchorage and also Meticulous Archive, the surveil land that's blue-white. Then in the sideboard, you have Mystical Dispute for the Mirror Match and Phoenix and Lotus Field. 
Rest in peace for Phoenix and Lotus Field. Narcissus Reversal for any spell-based deck. Chrome Hole Seed Shark to give you some pressure against decks like Lotus Field combo. Uh, then you have Temporary Lockdown for small creature decks. Narset for a Lotus Field combo. Premier Match, Phoenix. Regal Caracal for Grandy Matchup. Summary Dismissal for a Lotus Field combo. It's great because you can cast this in response to Dragon Lord Jamoka. And even though it cannot get countered, it can get exiled. And then you have Shark Typhoon. Uh, for other grindy matchups so that's blue white control let's move on to the number one deck right now in pioneer should be a surprise to absolutely no one with 14.1 percent of the metagame we have is it phoenix and this is a pretty cheap deck relatively speaking when you look at other decks only about 250 bucks to build the deck and some lists cost under 200. this deck's gotten better with of course pick lock prankster and sleight of hand printed in the format but it hasn't gotten really any new upgrades from the Ravnica set. Some lists are playing... No, <laughs> no, no new additions. Uh, some lists are not even playing the... I guess they don't even have the Surveil Land. No, no Surveil Land. So it's playing the 4 Arclight Phoenix, 4 Ledger Shredder, 4 Pricklock Prankster. Nobody's playing Thing in the Ice these days or Crackling Drake main deck. Then you have your classic Cantrips. 1-2 to two Spell Pierce in the main deck. So not a lot of counter spells. And to me, as a Lotus Field combo player, this is my best matchup. I would play against Phoenix all day long, and I'll probably win most tournaments I play in. Because they don't really have interaction in the main deck. They're slower by a turn or two. And their interaction just doesn't line up against all the mana I can make, because they mostly have soft counter spells. And in the sideboard of my deck, I play three North Sets Reversal, which absolutely crushes them if they play a counter spell on one of my cards. Or if they play a Treasure Cruise, I just counter it, and I copy it, so I draw three cards for two mana. Uh, they play Lightning Axe, Fiery Impulse, 1-2 to two Galvanic Generation, 1-2 to two Prismar Command, and about one copy of Torch the Tower. And in the sideboard, you have Mystical Dispute for the Mirror Match, and Lotus Field Combo, and Blue White Control, same with Negate, Crackling Drake, 2-3 to three copies for Grindy Matchups, Young Power Mentor also for Grindy Matchups, Anger of the Gods for uh, Convoke, Spirits, Humans, Aether Gust, great against the red-green vehicles decks, but also against any green decks they might encounter. Brotherhood's End, Unlicensed Hearse, Abraid, Fable Mirror Breaker, Stainful Stroke. This is one of the best cards against my deck, Lotus Field Combo. And then Brazen Borrower. So that's the current Pioneer metagame. Let me know in the comments which deck do you think is the best. And do you think we're going to see some new decks emerge to the top five of the format? I've seen a lot of Burl's Heroic. Is it and Soul and um, Karuga Fires as of late? So perhaps we're gonna see these decks go back up in popularity. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys later.